Hello, and welcome to today's lesson about estimating with fractions and using fractions as division. First, let's talk about estimating with fractions. We are going to be using this number line to help us with this process. Samuel ran one-fifth mile in the morning and one-half mile in the afternoon. How much of a mile did he run? In order to figure this out, we are going to use our number line to help us figure out where one-fifth and one-half is located so that we can make an estimate of how much of a mile he ran. First, we're going to look at the number one-fifth. Ask yourself this question. Is one-fifth closer to zero or closer to one-half? Since we know that fifths are smaller pieces than half pieces are, one-fifth is going to be closer to one than it is to one-half. The second fraction that we're working with is exactly one-half. On this number line, we already have one-half located. The next question I need to ask myself is, if I were to add this fraction and this fraction together, would I be closer to one-half, one, or one-and-a-half? In this case, because one-fifth is such a small piece, my answer is going to be one-half. One-fifth of a mile and one-half of a mile is closer to half a mile than it is to a full mile or a mile and a half. A recipe for bread calls for one cup of flour. If Ryan has half a cup of white flour and three-fourths cup of whole wheat flour, about how much flour would he have left after he makes the bread dough? Your options are less than one-half cup, about one cup, or more than one cup. Let's start out by looking at our fractions. The first fraction we have represented here is one-half. That fraction falls right there. The second fraction we have represented here is three-fourths. That fraction is about right here. It's close to one. If we were to add these two fractions together, we would get an answer that was bigger than one. But how much bigger than one would it be? Since we know that there are two-fourths and one-half, if we were to add one two-fourths more, ending up there, this is the amount that we would have that would be extra. This is about one-fourth. So Ryan would have less than half a cup of flour left after he makes the bread dough. Now let's take a moment to review a skill that we have worked on in the past changing mixed numbers to improper fractions. Here is the fraction 3 and 1 fourth. How do we change this number into an improper fraction? The first thing we have to do is multiply the denominator by the whole number. Then we take that answer and add in the numerator, put everything over the original denominator, and we will have our improper fraction. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. All of this will go over 4, so 13 fourths is an equivalent improper fraction for the mixed number 3 and 1 fourth. Let's look at one more problem. 6 and 8 ninths. First, we are multiplying the denominator times the whole number. Second, we are taking that answer and we're going to add 8 into it. And then everything on the right side will go over 9 because that was our original denominator. 6 times 9 is 54. 54 plus 8 is 62. 62 ninths is an equivalent improper fraction for the mixed number 6 and 8 ninths. Now let's look how to go backwards in that process by starting with an improper fraction and turning it into a mixed number. Here we have the improper fraction 65 sixths. Here is where we are going to talk about thinking about fractions as division. This line right here is what stands for the division. In order to change this improper fraction back into a mixed number, we need to divide the top number, or the numerator, by the bottom number, or the denominator. If there is a remainder, that number will go on top of the original denominator. It must be smaller than the original denominator, or you have not done enough dividing to make this number small enough. So we're going to start with 65 divided by 6. We know that 6 goes into 6 one time, 1 times 6 is 6, and 6 minus 6 is 0. Next we bring down the 5, 6 goes into 5 0 times, 0 times 6 is 0, and 5 minus nothing is 5. 
We have no more numbers to bring down, so here's how we're going to write our answer. 10 is going to be our whole number. There are six tens in the number 60. Five is the number that was left over, or that was our remainder. And then we're gonna take the exact same denominator and use that again. So 65 sixths is the improper fraction equivalent of 10 and 5 sixths. Let's look at one more example using the improper fraction 48 sevenths. Just as last time, the first thing I need to do is figure out how many sevens there are in 48. Since I know my math facts pretty well, I know that there are six sevens in 48, so that will be my whole number. Just like last time, I'm going to use the same denominator that was there originally, which is seven, and then I have to figure out what my remainder is. Six times seven is 42. I know that 48 minus 42 is six. So six and six sevenths is the mixed number equivalent to 48 sevenths. Here is your practice problem of the day. Change these two improper fractions, 16 thirds and 29 fifths, into mixed numbers. Don't forget to divide the numerator by the denominator, put the remainder on as the new numerator, and use the original denominator in your answer. Good luck!